Hello, this is part 3 of PEMF, Electroporation, and COVID-19. In this video, we're going to go more into depth on the things that were taught in the last video, so I would recommend watching part 2 if you haven't already. I'm super excited about the things I'm going to show you in this video. We got some great stuff, like teaching you what electroporation is, and showing you studies that prove the effectiveness of PEMF helping ions through the cell wall. First of all, let's not forget why this is important. Transporting ions through the cell wall is the life and breath of your cells. So the more you learn about this, the the more you're going to be empowered in knowing how to take care of your body, which is made up of over 70 trillion cells. All right, so I could go on and on about this. Let's get started. So now going on to the first subject, how does PMF affect transmembrane potential? I found this paper on researchgate.net. This paper is called Bioelectromagnetic Healing, Its History and a Rationale for Its Use by Thomas F. Valen. Mr. Valen has a PhD, is a PE project director, is a physicist, a licensed professional engineer with over 30 years professional experience, is a former patent examiner, research engineer, instrumentation designer, CEO, and currently an author, lecturer, and consultant on future energy developments. So this paper is like a research paper. He found a lot of information about people who have worked with PMF. He found the things that they discovered and put them in this paper. Starting on page nine where it says transmembrane potential, another important aspect of the biophysical effect of PMF can be found in analyzing the transmembrane potential, the TMP. Remember Dr. Ren in our last video? He taught us about TMP or transmembrane potential. When we're talking about membrane potentials, here's the basics of what we mean. There's a charge across this outside membrane, a literal electrical charge. For example, it is known that damaged or diseased cells present an abnormally low TMP, about 80% lower than healthy cells. This signifies a greatly reduced metabolism and, in particular, impairment in the sodium-potassium pump activity and the ATP production. So I'm going to re-emphasize here that ATP and the sodium-potassium pump, their functions are essential for the life and health of the cell. If the ATP level and the sodium-potassium pump aren't working, they won't be able to get the ions in the cell as well as get them out of the cell. A good example for this is breathing. So when we take a breath, we're absorbing oxygen. And when we exhale, we're getting rid of a carbon dioxide or waste out of the body. The difference between the lungs and the cells is that with lungs, we're exchanging gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. But with the cells, we're exchanging ions. The action potential of a cell or the exchange of ions in and out of the cell has a lot to do with voltage as Dr. Wren has explained in his video. So every cell has its resting state. For example, this neuron cell has negative 70 millivolts. It's been documented that if the resting state is closer to the threshold, the cell will have more action potential than it should. This overactivity in a cell can also be defined as inflammation. They've also observed in diseased cells that the resting state voltage can be too far away from the threshold, thus not getting enough exchange of ions it needs to survive. So now it should make sense when it says damaged or diseased cells present an abnormally low TMP or 80% lower than healthy cells. There's an imbalance with the electrical gradient as well as the chemical gradient. Continues to say, it is proposed that cell membranes may in fact rectify alternating current since structured proteins behave like solid state rectifiers, it is reasonable, therefore, to conclude based on these biophysical principles that any endogenous EMF potential of significant strength will theoretically stimulate the TMP, normal cell metabolism, the sodium potassium pump, ATP production, and healing. This is already found in literature. TMP is proportional to the activity of this pump and thus to the rate of healing. Okay, let me explain. Remember that video I showed in part two, how wireless energy transfer works? A rapidly oscillating electric current is applied to a coil at its specific resonant frequency. This creates a magnetic field in the region around the coil. Tune a second coil to the same resonant frequency as the source, and it will couple, resonating anywhere within that region and converting the oscillating magnetic field into an electrical current within the second coil. So let's pretend the coil on the left is a PMF coil. It's emitting a magnetic field and frequencies. And instead of there being a coil on the right side, we're going to put a human cell. Every living thing resonates to a certain frequency. So let's say we found the resonant frequency to this human cell. It's going to induct and maybe have an inductive coupling effect and receive energy from this magnetic field and frequency from the PEMF coil. So this is how I see it working with our cells. We have this EMF potential of significant strength that stimulates the TMP, normalizes cell metabolism, the sodium potassium pump, ATP production, which all of this helps the cell breathe. It helps the nutrition get in and the nutrition get out, thus healing the cell and then healing the body. This is why we say PEMF heals from the inside out. 
So now we're going to look into more studies showing evidence that this is a true principle. Healthy cells, according to the Nobel Prize winner Otto Warburg, have cell TMP voltages of 70 to 90 millivolts. Due to the consistent stresses of modern life and toxic environment, cell voltage tends to drop as we age or get sick. As the voltage drops, the cell is unable to maintain healthy environment for itself. If the electrical charge of a cell drops to 50, a person may experience chronic fatigue. If the voltage drops to 15, the cell often can be cancerous. Dr. Warburg also found in 1925 that, that cancer cells function best in the absence of oxygen, in effect, living in fermentation rather than respiration.